All right, so here's the final plate. I'd say pretty flexible, honestly. Ten by twelve. The ceramic doesn't go. The actual plate doesn't go this far out. Due to the way I sewed it, there's a bit of overlap, and so the final carrier plate had to compensate for that. You you understand with the pictures that I show, but yeah, this is the plate. Level three plus, I mean, you can stop this, so. Hopefully you can stop 308. Hopefully you can stop more than that, but probably not. The actual armor portion itself is, mm, I don't know, like 50.52. But then you have to do all the layers the laminating layers and stuff. So without the carrier portion, I think it's 69.69. .69. And then with it, depending on how much I squeeze, not squeezing at all, it's about 74. And then if I squeeze enough, I can get it down to 0 0.67, but realistically, you're looking at 74 to 75, so. We are 0.10 off from the test piece. This piece we had was 0.84, so we've saved about this much, which is not as much as we would have liked, but it's definitely more flexible. And it's definitely better than the test piece we originally had. It is um, heavier than I would like, and that's mainly due to the silicone. The, Silicone was used to laminate the strike face. Which will provide shock absorption and limit uh, fragment fragmentation, which will hopefully improve its multi-hit capability even though it already had pretty good multi-hit capability to begin with. But the last I checked, this was six pounds, 13 ounces. I think that might've been without the carrier. So let's see what it is now. Seven pounds and almost two ounces. So, a bit heavier than we'd like. We could have used the lighter, you know, outer cover. We used 1000 denier ballistic nylon. Could have done like a 250, like a, a really light fabric. But, really want to been that much of a difference. Really the biggest thing we could do was um, not use the silicone or find a, a, a lighter material to go in between the ceramics of the strike face. 
But yeah, either way, I think this is pretty good. I'll show some pictures of it roughly on my chest. I don't have a carrier. I'm getting one, but I don't have it yet. So I'll just be holding it up so I can get a rough idea of the concealability of it and then how it conforms with the flexibility. Ideally, this would have more pressure on it by being in a carrier, but I mean, it can do this. It just doesn't do it outside of a carrier, probably. I thought I picked a lighter shirt, but this will hide shadows better if you're to actually try to conceal it. I mean, obviously if my shirt wasn't folding like that. All right, so here we're gonna be going over the build process a little bit. Here we have um, the strike face being laminated using silicone and then being sewn in between two layers of Kevlar, which you can see here. Then cut 240 pieces of titanium, put them into 10 by 12s and then cut them out. After that, I glued both the pieces between a one layer of UHMWPE to keep the pieces from sort of breaking out of their tape layer. I then put them into a pocket of Kevlar and glued that back to the back of the strike face. I then sewed them together. That way it wasn't just relying on the glue. I then cut out the UHMWPE, 20 layers, sewed them into groups of four. I then glued those groups together and then pressed it. After that, I glued the groups to the back of the titanium and the strike face, and then I taped it so it wasn't just relying on the glue. And then I sewed a pocket, and then you guys obviously know the rest. So I'm thinking I'm gonna send this out to somebody, hopefully somebody that can test 308 threats, and then beyond that, because we already know it will stop M855A1. That's essentially like the highest threat for 556 that most people will have access to. Um, and then, yeah, after this, I send this out to somebody. Going to immediately start work on the ballistic helmet. And yeah, I'll see you guys when that video is ready to be put out.